My name's Delara and I was a young Archie winner for 2016 in the 16 to 18 year old category. I painted a portrait of my dad for that. And I'm really excited to be a guest presenter here on Get Artie. Let me show you a way that I use to break down an image into simple shapes before sketching it. We're gonna draw a peacock. You'll need a piece of paper, a pencil and an eraser. So let's get started. So we're gonna start with the head. For that we can draw a circle like this, a nice big circle. Then we're gonna imagine that this is a clock. So 12 goes here, six goes here. Draw a teeny tiny triangle for the point of the head at where the 11 would be. And then a longer triangle where the four would be. Now this is gonna be the beak and this is the point of the head. So next we're gonna draw the neck. Start with a long line down, draw a rectangle like this. And for the body part, we're gonna draw a teardrop. Like that. And the sketch is done. Don't worry if your sketch is a bit messy, it'll all be covered up when we put colour on later. Now that everything looks really angular and awkward, we need to make it smooth like a real peacock. So join the lines and you can always change or adjust it to how you think the peacock would look best. For the back line, draw a nice smooth curve, still going along with your initial observations. Then we can draw in the head like this. See how it's a bit awkward there? We need to make it one smooth line. Like that. So the beak is usually a bit curved and a bit pointy. The bottom is a bit smaller than the top. So let's start with the top first so we can get bearings. Like that. And about just over halfway, draw another line and connect it like that. And up a bit extra. And there you go, the top of the beak is done. Now let's connect the bottom back up. If it helps, it's always best to look at a reference image of a peacock so you can see exactly what the different features look like. Now let's just draw a little bit of the bottom of the head. So now let's just draw the chin a little bit. And now with my initial sketches, I think that's a bit too small for the body. So I'm just gonna get go a bit further when I do the smooth curve like this. And that's all done. So next we need to do the feathers at the back of the peacock. They're gonna be little semicircles. Like that. They don't have to be in order or neat. You just need to fill up a little bit of room just to show that there's more going on behind the peacock. And that's done. Now we just have to erase the inside sketches that we did first and that'll reveal our final sketch. So now that the body's done, we need to draw the eye. Peacocks have really big eyes, so let's start by drawing a circle in the middle of the head. And then we need to draw an oval around the circle. And we need to point the ends, kind of like a human eye that's on an angle. Now, peacocks have weird curvy lines, kind of like eyebrows, one on top and one under the eye. So let's start on top and connect it down to the beak and one under, connecting just before the beak. So draw two long wavy lines above and below the eye. And that's the sketch complete. Stick around, because later on Get Artie, we're gonna be getting colorful. Earlier on Get Arty, we did this drawing of a peacock. Now let's get a little bit more arty and add some colour. You're going to need some markers. Two shades of blue, two shades of green, two shades of brown, yellow and black, and of course your drawing from earlier. Now we're not just going to colour this in normally, we're going to fill the entire image with lots of teeny tiny little dots. This technique is called pointillism. And don't worry if you didn't catch the first part of this project, you can do this technique with any drawing. So now we just need a main colour for each section of the body. Let's do light blue for the body, light green for the feathers, and light brown for the beak. So let's start off with the body first, and we're gonna do some tiny dots everywhere. 
So near the edges, go really close together and as you get further away, make your dots further apart. This creates depth because it looks like shading. And you can see I'm moving pretty quickly, lots of tiny little dots. You don't want to spend too much time doing this because you have a lot of space to fill. So you're just going to do this light blue all the way along the edge of the peacock and space them out near the middle of the tummy like that. So it looks like it's 3D. So don't worry about the size of your dots. You can do some teeny tiny dots and you can do some really big fat dots. It all adds texture. And now up the front of the body. So we're just gonna go up halfway and leave this section of the neck white for later because we're gonna fill it in with green. Okay, so I think I'm happy with how that's looking right now. Let's move on to the beak and light brown for that one. So once again, we're gonna go really close near this edge, really close near this edge and really close down the bottom of the beak. That's because that'll be more in the shadows than the top will be. Leave the top predominantly white, as that's where the light's hitting. Now, we need to do a little bit of a nostril here, so a semicircle, and fill it in. And we're done. We also need to fill in this eye area, the outer eye, with a bit of light brown, just on this edge and this edge. Once again, really tied together near the edge and further apart. Mm, I want one dot here and one dot there, just to change it up a bit. And again, really close and further apart. And that's the brown done. And now for the light green, we're gonna just do it on the arch of each of the feathers. We're gonna fill this in on the arch of all the feathers, kind of like an outline with green. So really close, near where you drew the line earlier, and a few dots in the middle, like that. And a few in the middle. Okay, and that's the green complete. Now that we've finished all the mid-tones, we can go a shade darker for each of the colours. That's dark green, dark blue, and a dark brown, and do it right on top near the edge. All right, now we're gonna start with the shadows. So all the way at the end, make this like your outline, where your pencil line was. So you can cover up your pencil line with the darkest colors. And a few stray dots. And that's the blue shadows done. Let's go on and do the shadows for the beak with dark brown. And once again, do the outline. Follow your pencil line here, close to the edge, and then sparingly as you go closer to the middle. And don't forget this little bit there. Do this on the top and bottom beak, just where you did the light brown before. Now, with the same brown, we're gonna do the shadows for the eye as well as the feathers. Okay, so we're doing the brown because if you look at a reference image, the peacock feathers don't just have one color of green. It has a lot of different colors. So this makes it a lot more natural looking. So now that's the brown done, we're gonna use a green a bit darker than the shade we use for the feathers to do just this bit over here near the face as a bit of a highlight. So with the dark green, follow the natural line of the beak up until you meet the halfway point of the eye. Leave these sections that look like the peacock's eyebrows white. This gap that we left here on the neck earlier, we're now gonna fill in with dark green. 
Now we're going to blend in the green with the blue by filling in any gaps that are in the blue or going directly on top. And that's the dark green done. And now for the yellow. This is another highlight on top of the ones we've already done. So we're going to do it once again on the head area, a bit higher than we did the green last time and on the neck area as well. We're also going to go through the feathers down the base. And that's the yellow complete. Okay, so now all the shadows, highlights and base colours are complete. We're going to go in with a bit of black just to finish off the image and of course to do the eye. So like we did before, but with the black this time, we're going to go ahead and do the outline of the body. This helps define the image more, but be careful, you don't want it to look too harsh. Remember to blend it in nicely. So now we're going to go ahead and put some more black in the back feathers. This will help tie the feathers in with the body. Um, you don't want to go too much because you still want it to be nice and light. And I think we're finally complete. Now you don't have to use this technique for just this drawing. You can try it on anything you like. Thanks for having me on Get Artie. It's been lots of fun. If you know anything about animals, you know how wild and unpredictable they can be, which means taking a good photo is extremely hard. But have no fear, I've got a few tips and tricks for you next time you're out snapping your favourite wildlife. Tip one, do your research. Find out where your animal lives, what they like to do, and of course, what they like to eat or just go up to one of the keepers. Hi. Hey, how are you, Jess? Good, Nathan, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. good. Now, I want to get a really close shot of, like, the eye of a wild animal and, you know, kind of them in movement or even having a little smile. How well, can I do that? perfect timing, Nathan. We're actually about to do our 2.30 show, so if you stick with us, we're going to bring out a snake, a lizard, uh, and the echidna, they decide to wake up, but the cutest animal on the planet, the quokka. I heard they're the happiest animal. They're the happiest to us. We think the cutest as well. Perfect, let's go do yeah, that. Yeah, let's go. Now, as you can see, some animals are very unpredictable. You just don't know what they're going to do, so it's always a good idea to carry two cameras. Because then you can get a sneaky selfie, like this. And use my other camera. Oh, 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 don't kiss me. Oh, don't kiss me on the head. Oh. Don't take my other... Another tip, bring three cameras, because sometimes the animals like both your cameras. <laughs> With our names here in Australia. Now, another big tip is that wild animals really rely on their senses, you know, sense of smell, their sight, and all that sort of stuff. And as you can see, the wallabies and the other kangaroos down the back there are actually a little bit afraid of me. They can sense me here in their actual area. So, a good idea is to always. Find somewhere to hide, like a tree, and they might not see you. Usually a bigger tree than this one. And you should sit down wind for them. So the wind's blowing past them, then past you. If you go the opposite way, they'll be able to smell you in the wind. So I'm sitting down wind right now. I think one of them might have. As you can see, Finding out what they like to eat and where they like to eat it is always a good place to get a good portrait shot of an animal eating its food. Look at that, perfect. Which gives you the opportunity to get up real close and get great shots of their face, their eyes, their beak, the way they eat. And of course, to focus in really close 
and get that perfect portrait. Now the trick to a perfect shot is like rules of thirds. Imagine there's a grid on your photo. So when you take it, there's two lines going this way and a couple of lines going that way. What you want to do, you don't want to have your subject, like the budgie just here, right in the corner of your frame. You want to have him around that area, there, on the line of the grid you have basically in the shot. Nice. See? Allowing you to get that perfect shot of the wood and the budgie. Oh! Um, like I said, animals are very unpredictable, as you can see. Thanks, mate. And just remember, guys, experiment with all the different angles and shots you can get. And remember, have fun and get out of here. Art therapy is working with people who might have some trouble making artwork on their own. My role as an art therapist is to work with people who have disabilities, who might have challenges in um, communicating their experience or in just communication in general. Okay, and this is also quite a thick one. I work for a disability support organisation and that means I support them in art making. What can you tell me about that picture with your friend, Jazz? Where? Some of the people that I work with can't talk, so there's lots of methods of communication that um, I might use with the people that I'm working with. So what colour would you like to add to this one, Alex? I have red. Red? Of course. Some people have cochlear implants or hearing aids, so I'd speak with them. Other people have a little bit of vision, but they might be profoundly deaf, and so I would sign to them where they can see. Other people have no vision and no hearing at all, so we'd use tactile signs, so hand over hand. Are you ready to put it on the canvas? The way that we would work together it really depends on the artist. So some people might need more support than others and some might be really independent, might just need me for assistance with, say, determining which colour is which, because colour blindness is also something that um, people are affected by. For the people who are profoundly blind, they've started to experiment with using Bluetack to make images of a picture that's in their mind using the Bluetack on the surface. What's come out of that has just been so amazing to see the scenes that people hold in their minds. Art therapy is a good way of looking at other ways of expressing your feelings and emotions. The work that the participants do in the program is really led by them, so they tell me what they'd like to do. Lots of people really love painting, some love pottery, and we also do some craft making. The reason why I do the work that I do is really just 
for a love of engaging with people and a love of art making. Through a lot of hard work and dedication, they stick with the process and keep making art. I'm always going home amazed at what comes out of a day. People really put so much of themselves into artwork, so I always feel like I make incredible connections with people and um, I think that's a really amazing and rewarding thing to be involved in. My name is Tess Stuart Moore and I'm an art therapist.